mental health is something that we don't talk about enough. In the black community, well, we're massively overrepresented in, in the mental health institutions, even more so than in the prisons. And again, these are questions we have to ask. Well, why? You know, but once you get a control and an understanding of who you are, no one can use you against you. No one can ever use your mental illness against you. You've already spoke about it, so what mm -hmm. you got? The biggest point in life to resolve mental health is like giving a fuck about a person. Where did you get the courage? I got the courage. The two words. I care. It's Chill Wheel Radio, where connections will be made, advice will be given, jokes will be told, and things will get real. My name is Willis Cooks, and I'm your host. But understand this. This show is not meant to be used as a substitute for a relationship with a licensed mental health professional. Enjoy the show, y'all. Yo, 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 yo. What's the deal? What's the deal? What's the deal? What's popping, man? Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Chill Well. Radio, man, it's Sunday. I hope everybody's having a nice day, nice weekend, nice Sunday, man. Um, it's been really relaxing today. I didn't I, I didn't have to work today. I worked yesterday. Um, I didn't have to work today. I worked yesterday. I did a, a bunch of nothing today. I decided to go to the grocery store. So the week so far has been good. I've been getting called off a lot from work lately. Um, only because there's no patients in the hospital. In none of the hospitals that I've been working in. There's no patients there. And I've said this before, it's like the opposite of what, you know, goes on in the media, but there's no patients in the hospitals right now. So, you know, that causes me to uh, get caught off of work sometime when the sentence is low. But outside of that, my week has been going really, really well, man. I'm getting, I'm getting, uh, I think it was like way, way earlier in the show in which, in which I have trouble writing things down, right? I'm the person that when it comes to a schedule, it's all in my head um, for the past, for the past two weeks. Um, I would like to commend myself for actually going forth with that, right? Um, because my schedule, my schedule isn't isn't getting more chaotic, but I just want to be a little bit more mindful of the things that I'm doing every day, right? And that, and that goes the same for you, right? Being more mindful what you do from a day to day, um, because I keep everything in my head, and sometimes things get lost, sometimes things get mixed up in the, in the shuffle, right? Especially if you work multiple jobs or you do multiple things, you're kind of just going with the flow, and then the second you have nothing to do, you like oh. I know I got something to do, but I can't remember. And I catch myself going, I've, I've been catching myself dealing with that a whole lot lately, right? I know I have something to do, but I can't pinpoint what exactly I have to do because I, ain't, I, didn't, I didn't write it down. I didn't remember it. So this week I've been writing a whole lot more things down lately, and it's been going really, really well. Um, outside of that, uh, for some odd reason, my anxiety has been kind of high this week. My anxiety has been kind of high this week. Um, it's just been kind of high when I'm going outside. Right. It's just it's just everything feels so, so angry right now with, with people and, and with going places and with going to the grocery store and, and, and driving. It's like I'm on edge. Right. Obviously, whenever I see a police officer, like I get I don't get nervous, but it's like, OK, what's up? But like now it's just like, oh, because I, I don't I don't walk around with a mask. Like I have one in my car, but I don't walk around with the mask on. And I try my best to go into these stores without a mask. But they tell me you can't go in here with the mask if you don't have a mask on. It's just like, uh, you know, so it's a little bit. My anxiety is a little bit kind of shuffled right now, but it's OK, man. You know, you got to take care of yourself. And I'm sure a lot of us are anxiety and certain things are a little shuffled at this moment and at this time and you know it's important to really be mindful of that it's important to really no notice when your meter is kind of you know too far off to the left or too far off to the right if you're just not noticing how far or where your meter is at she's gonna go buck wild right you're not really gonna know where you're at and the next thing you looked up things is all messed up because you wasn't mindful of where you're at at that particular time right um but then being mindful of it it's gonna allow you to put that shit put that shit knock that shit out real quick right knock it out real quick especially if you like uh, already an anxious person you're noticing your anxiety is going from a two up to a ten it's like okay you're able to knock it out real quick before it gets too crazy right you're able to just, just, just get it under control real quick and that's what happens a lot of time when it comes to depression and anxiety and a lot of other things right we don't we aren't noticing 
the changes in our moods we're not noticing the shifts in our moods or when we do notice it we kind of just put it in our pocket and just let it let it be because i got it i can deal with it i'm a little bit angry right now but i'm not too angry to the point to where i need to knock someone out so i'm good you know but those little those little subtle changes are the things that's going to add up into something monumental right those little subtle changes are the things that's going to add up into you cursing out your boss or getting into an argument with your girlfriend or beating somebody up or whatever the case may be right those little subtle changes are what's important because they lead into the big boom that's going to happen you know when you have like your break or when you get pissed off or when the wrong pe person tells you like hey you can't come in here without a mask on like those little subtle changes right so it's dr drastically important to be mindful of that and that's something i've been working on for the past few weeks right extremely being mindful of the changes that i have going on right and it's and it's, it's extremely weird not weird but i'm very conscious of taking the therapeutic advice that i give to other folks right as a therapist i'm mindful of let me not be a hypocrite let me not tell a person you need to do this if it hasn't worked for me or if i haven't tried it right granted if it hasn't worked for me that doesn't mean i'm not going to tell you because something that may not work for me may be able to work for you right but even so whatever i'm doing if i know it definitely works for me i'm definitely going to tell you what to do what it is i'm definitely going to tell you that you should go this route right i'm definitely going to be that person that's like hey let me live by example or let me do what let me do the things that i tell other people to do so i can understand like hey this works in this type of environment this works in that type of environment so this week has a little has been a little bit more mindful for me and i've been acknowledging where i'm at you know roughly whether it be at work whether it be at home whether you know it be me driving because i do spend a lot of time in my car whatever it is just be a little bit more mindful of my own personal meter and that's the same with you all who are listening make sure you are mindful of where that meter is at is it at 10 is it at zero is it at five or eight on your scale whether it be anxiety depression whether it be, whether your mood is positive or negative or whatever the case may be be mindful of where it's at don't let it slip away and that's not a, 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 a hard thing to do that's not something that's going to take the majority of your day i think a, a few weeks ago i stated that make sure you have those daily those daily check-ins make sure you have some check-ins throughout the day whether it be in the morning in the afternoon at night random points and times throughout the day make sure you have those check-ins with yourself so you can see where you're at because you do not want to look up and end up in the psych hospital looking at me like, yo, Willis, how did I end up here? It's probably because you ain't listening to my show. That's how you end up in the psych hospital. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but be mindful of where you at. All right? And that's what I've been focusing on this week. So moving on forward into the self-care piece, right? I believe last week the self-care piece was change your alarm sound in the morning so that music can kind of start off your day right if you need to listen to something ratchet so you can wake up with some energy okay go ahead go bump your little yg or you know your, your yin yang twins that nuck if you buck whatever it is <laughs> waking up the duck if you buck is crazy but whatever it is right or if you need to wake up with uh you know some motivation you know put on a motivational speaker in the morning put on a motivational song whatever it is that gets you going you know or if you want to wake up in a more soothing and relaxing mood put that on right so that was last week but for this week the self-care piece that i want everyone to implement within their self-care routine make sure you listen to some type some type of soothing music on your way to bed right only because only because a lot of us have hectic days a lot of us have days in which a lot of us have days in which you know we're constantly busy you're constantly on your feet and you're constantly in go mode from the second you clock in to the second you get home to even even for some of the individuals who have children the second you wake up you know until the second you go to bed your day is go 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 right some of us we need that soothing music to kind of put us in a specific place to help us go to sleep because a lot of people have problems sleeping because internally their anxiety and their little meter or whatever has not stopped it's still going it's still going it's still going one of the ways in order to slow that down is to put you in a place to where everything is kind of calming down everything is more relaxed right one of the ways to do that is by listening to some type of music some type of soothing sounds right obviously meditating is can be able to assist you with that but some people have trouble with silence some people need music some people need some form of sound some people need something to kind of put them in a trance i guess 
right some people need those things in order to help them out to go to bed right because if you live one very very busy life it may be hard for you to go to sleep right your body may be tired you may feel tired but your mind isn't tired your mind is just constantly going right and for me that happens a lot for me i have certain days in which it's like hey i go to sleep early but then i have other days in which i may go to sleep at like one or two o'clock in the morning right or three o'clock in the morning only because my mind hasn't stopped racing there are a few ways a few things that you can do in order to get your mind from stop racing right running things down being knowledgeable of what's going on things of those sorts but one of the things that you could do in order to help soothe you down in order to help get you to a place turn some music on right whatever it is it could be this music that's playing in the background it could be some meditative type of music it could be i don't know throwing some al green what was the two people that messed up the ig live performances i think like teddy pendergrass or Babyface and, and something the other dude teddy riley there we go teddy riley and, and Babyface. listen to them because they got some real soothing music right uh listen to whatever you need to do in order to help calm yourself down right because you never want to go to bed angry you never want to go to bed sad right you never want to really do that you want to make sure you're going to bed as peaceful as possible because the way you go to bed will dictate how you wake up the way you go to bed has a high chance of dictating how you wake up because what you go to what you go to bed with on your mind is probably going to be the first thing that you think about when you wake up go to bed angry at your girlfriend or angry at your boyfriend you're gonna go you're gonna wake up you're like oh man fuck that bitch man uh, whatever whatever it is right if you go to bed sad with this person on your mind you may wake up with that if you go to bed mad angry at a specific co-worker or if you go to bed mad thinking to yourself something negative you may wake up with that right you may have you may go to sleep with that you may have a dream about that in some type of way and then you may wake up with that right it's important to kind of put your mind in a specific place before you go to bed so you can be able to wake up in a good mood a lot of the a lot of the things that we have to do when it comes to our moods have to be intentional if the things that we aren't if the things that we are doing when it comes to our moods are not intentional our mood is going to be very chaotic right our mood is going to be all over the place right we have to ha we have to understand that we have control over the mood that we are that's going to go on throughout that day you have control over it you may not have control over the co-worker that talks too much or you know that car that just cuts you off or that nasty coffee that you drink in the morning or whatever it is you may not have control over the relationships and everything you don't have control over none of that but you have control over the mood that you have right and we have to be intentional about the mood that we want to have if I want to be in a happy mood, let me play some happy music when I wake up and let me make sure, you know, that is going to help me out. But if I'm trying to get to a place to where, if I'm trying to get to a place to where I'm noticing that I'm waking up a little angrier, well, maybe you need to be mindful about how you're going to sleep. Are you going to sleep with high anxiety? Are you going to sleep in an angry place? Are you going to sleep where you are not at peace? If you are going to sleep in any of those ways, then you're going to wake up in a, in, a, in an atmosphere that may not be good for you, right? So to be able to help you out with that, be mindful of the music, well, not be mindful, but make sure you play some music before you go to bed. So that way you are mindful of where you're at. So that way you can be able to go to sleep peacefully. Do what you have to do to make sure you don't go to bed mad. Make sure you don't go to bed angry. Make sure you make peace with the day. That's the biggest, biggest, biggest thing. I can't remember. I think it's the spiritual homegirl. Yeah, the spiritual homegirl. I love that page. Because I love her and her page and her podcast because she makes it a point to tell people, make sure you, know, you make peace with the day. It's drastically important that you do that. It's drastically important that you start each day brand new that you end each day like it's every like it's a chapter in the book because that's what it is each day is one specific chapter or one specific page in the book and the moment you go to sleep it's over it's like the moment you flip over to a next chapter that chapter is over right the previous chapter may carry on into the next chapter but within that next chapter you have a place that you can start fresh that moment you wake up you have a place that you can start fresh so when you go to bed do what you have to do to make peace with the day if you need some assistance with that fit, find some music to help you go to sleep find some music to put you in a peaceful place find some music to put you in a place to where you're not as angry as you was 
or you're not as sad as you was. Or you just need to, you notice your anxiety is at a 10, you need to bring it down to a 5 or maybe even to a 1. Whatever you have to do, find some music to, to help you get to the place that you want to get to and get to the place that you need to get to so you can make peace with that day so you can be able to wake up that next morning and be all good. All right, so moving forward into the main topic. Let me take some water real quick because my throat is dry. But moving moving forward into the main topic, right? And this is something I'm sure everybody can deal with or well, everybody deals with at some point in time, which is that one coworker or that one friend or that one person that talks entirely too much, right? We all have that one person in our lives who just can't stop talking, who just won't shut up, who they're going to come to you and they're going to talk about everything. They're just going to drop everything on you. Did you ask for it? No. Do you think, are they distracting you from doing some of the work that you need to do? Yeah. Do they make you angry? Do they give you anxiety? Oh, yeah, definitely. Do they irritate your soul? Definitely. We all have that coworker. I have a few. I'm sure you have a few as well. Right. So the main the main focus of today's show is dealing with and working with those individuals who talk way too much. Right. But in order to in order to figure out what we should do for those and not for those individuals, but what we should do when we come across those individuals who just talk too much. Let's take a step back and try to figure out not try to figure out. But let me take a step back and kind of explain to you why certain individuals do talk so much. Right. Uh, For for a lot of people, silence produces anxiety. Silence is anxiety producing for a lot of people. I love silence, but some people hate it when they are in a silent room or when they are in a workplace and everything is quiet. It gives them anxiety. They get nervous. So what they start to do is they just start to ramble. They just start to ramble just to throw a bunch of things out there just to help calm their nerves. Right. Some of us need the silence. Some of us need the solitude. Some of us need to be quiet so we can be able to hear our thoughts. That person on the other end is doing the complete opposite of what you're doing. Right. They need to fill the space with something, no matter what it is. It could be about their dog. It could be about what they watch. It could be about their parents. You know, it could be about anything. They need to throw something out there as a coping mechanism for their own anxiety. Right. Some people who talk entirely too much, they're talking to fill the space because dead space, dead air, quiet, all of that stuff is anxiety producing for them. So they're trying to cope with the one thing that gives them anxiety, which is silence, because silence is something that a lot of people are afraid of. Silence is something that a lot of people that don't want to silence is something that a lot of people don't want to deal with because we're in a, when we're in a quiet place. The one thing that we have to deal with is the thoughts that's in our mind. Right. But when everything is loud, when we're blasting music or when we're in a chaotic room or when I'm talking too much, I don't have the ability to think about all that reckless stuff that's messing me up or all of those things I'm trying to get away from. So what I'm about to do is I'm going to just start rambling. Right. Also, what a lot of other people do is for those individuals who talk too much. Right. They're trying to figure out what they could do to get away from their own personal emotions. Right. So once again, it's a coping mechanism. Right. I'm trying to cope with these negative distractions that I have. I'm trying to cope with these negative emotions that I have. So me talking allows that to be a distraction or be a distraction for the emotions that I don't want to deal with. Right. I don't want to deal with my anger. So I'm going to just talk. I'm going to just talk just for the sake of talking because I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to deal with my sadness. So I'm going to just talk. I don't want to deal with this thing. So I'm going to just talk. I'm going to do what I have to do to run away from it. Right. A lot of people who just talk too much, they're trying to avoid something. Right. They're trying to avoid something, which may be the silence, which may be the emotions, which may be the thoughts that's in our head that, you know, we don't want to deal with or we don't want to face. So we just finna start blowing things up and start rambling. Right. It's same. it's the same way as that individual who has to be around someone all the time because they're afraid to be with themselves. Someone who always needs this person next to them. Because they can't fathom the thought of them being alone. Because it's so scary. Same with those individuals who talk too much. They're either scared of silence or they're either using their talking. They're running their mouth as a distraction to get away from the emotions. But also someone, also a lot of us, we just want to vent. A lot of us, it we want someone to listen. Right? We may be in a household to where... You know, we are the middle child and 
no one listens to the middle child and we don't feel loved and we don't feel appreciated and we don't feel listened to when i raise my hand no one acknowledges me so when i go to work or when i go to school or when i go somewhere else i tell that person everything because i'm not able to get it at home right sometimes those individuals who who talks a lot they talk a lot because they want someone to listen to them they need someone to listen to they need someone to listen to them because they're not getting that at home or they're not getting that from the person that they believe they should be getting it from right everything happens for a reason and the person isn't rambling just for the sake of rambling there's something behind it it could be something very very small but there's something behind it right so that individuals who's talking a lot there or sometimes they just want to get something off of their chest they just want to vent. A lot of people who talk too much, they just vent for the sake of venting. They don't even want your advice. I don't want you to tell me anything, but just listen to what I have to say. And that goes into what I just said, right? I don't care for your advice. You may try to offer it, but don't, you know, just let me vent because no one listens to me. So you're going to listen to me right now. And I don't care if you got work to do. You just want to listen to me, right? So some of the reasons people talk too much, one, silence is anxiety producing so they have to put something in that silence which is them talking too much in order to help them deal with their anxiety or two they're trying to use the talking as a distraction from their emotions because they don't want to deal with anything that's internal or three they just want someone to listen to them because they're not getting it from the person or the place they believe they should be getting it from right so when it comes to those individuals or when it comes to you that person who has i guess to suffer to do suffer right to deal with that individual to, to, who's talking to you one of the first things we all got to do you have to make sure you do is ask yourself a question do you want to listen to this person do you have the time to listen to this person do you have the energy to listen to this person right ask yourself those questions right as soon as that individual is in there or if you see that person coming ask yourself those questions do you want to listen to it? Do you have the time to? Do you have the energy to to listen to them? If you want to listen to them, make sure you listen to them attentively. Make sure you interact with them. Make sure you ask questions, right? If you want to. If you want to listen to them, make sure you do that. But if you don't want to listen to them, there are a few things that you need to do up front. One of the first things that you have to do is be direct. You have to be direct about what you don't want what you don't want to go on right now so when this person comes to you and they're and they're talking and they're talking and they're talking cut them off you know try to stop them as early as you can and let them know like hey timmy i got some work to do right now i have these deadlines that i have to meet i'm sorry but i can't really talk right now let's catch up you know at lunch or let's catch up sometime after work and we can continue this conversation now, when you're being direct, you don't, when you're being direct, the one thing you have to be mindful of is your tone. The one thing you have to be mindful of is your tone, because what happens when we just allow people to just talk and ramble on, we get frustrated. Next thing you know, we just black out on that person. Yo, shut up. Stop talking. Leave me the fuck alone. And now that person is all offended and mad and all this extra stuff. When they come, be direct with them with, from the beginning. And set those limits, set those boundaries, set those walls that you need to be put out there. But be mindful of your tone. Let that person know, like, hey, this is not the good time because I have this to do. I have that to do or whatever the case is. And if that person continues, because some people will hear you and just keep going as if what you just said don't matter. OK, cool. When they do that, say it again. Right. But it's important to be direct about what you're doing. Now, a lot of the times when we come across these individuals, I have, especially me, I have a huge problem with cutting people off. I have a huge problem with cutting people off. Um, I guess that's what makes me a good listener, but I have a huge problem with cutting people off because in my mind, that's just rude, right? But the one thing we have to understand is when it comes to yourself, when it comes to the work that you need to do, when it comes to the mood that that individual is kind of putting you in because you don't want to listen to them, but they're forcing you to listen to them, you know, so now you're getting frustrated. If you need some ability, if you need some tips on when to cut them off, cut them off either if you notice them switching subjects or cut them off in between their breaths, right? Because at the end of the day, everybody's going to have to stop talking just to breathe, right? As soon as they breathe, cut them off and go right there, right? 
because we have to be mindful of where you are at right that's why it's important to ask yourself those questions early on do you want to listen to this person do you not want to listen to this person do you have time to spare if you have time to spare let that person know in the beginning like yo timmy i got five minutes what's up i got two minutes what's good and be on time and let that person know yo timmy you got about two minutes left yo, think start wrapping it up because i got to get to work right because what happened is that individual who's coming to your desk or is coming into your coming into your you know your car your house or giving you the call they're not they're not thinking of the time that you have or the time that you don't have they're just thinking about the thing that they have to get off of their chest or the thing that they're trying to get through right so let that individual know what's going on if you don't you can't be mad at them for talking because they're just assuming that you have the ability to listen because you're li- because you're sitting there listening to them right the main thing a lot of us have to do is just be direct but also when that individual is talking and i get this a lot because i have a, I have a co-worker that talks a lot and she's a lovely co-worker but she just talks a lot but you know sometimes if that individual <laughs> I'm sorry sometimes if that individual just does not stop talking right put yourself in certain positions to where you prepare yourself when you have to work with that person so because some of us have to work directly with that individual right go to work a little earlier right do the work go to work a little earlier change where you are working at you know let that individual know from the beginning hey today we're not doing this it's important to be it's important to set those boundaries from the gate if you're not setting those boundaries from the gate it's going to be bad for you it's going to be very very bad and you cannot blame that other person on the other end to just keep talking all right so the one true and extremely extremely you know important way to deal with all of these individuals who talk too much ask yourself do you want to listen to that person or not if you do listen attentively but if you don't be direct with that person from the gate i don't want to listen I don't say i don't want to listen to you but i don't have the ability to talk right now because i have to do xyz be direct let that person know you can't talk and let that person know why and then let that person know at the end of the day we can do this again I can't talk to you right now because I have the deadline to meet. Let's continue at lunch. Let's continue after work or hit me up later. Give that person the ability to figure out, like give that person the, the, the chance, right? When you give that individual the chance to talk to you again or to reschedule, the conversation that you are having, that person is more mindful and more willing to stop talking because in their head, it's like, okay, cool. We're going to continue this later. I'll chop it up with you in a little bit. But when you just tell that person to just stop, <clears throat> when you just tell that person to stop and you don't give that person the chance to be able to talk again later on, they're just going to continue talking because I need to get this out. Now, we have to do what we have to do to soothe your own personal mood. Like I said earlier, be mindful of, be mindful of how much control you have over your mood. So if you see people or if you come across a coworker or a friend that talks a lot that you know what's going to increase your frustration, that's going to increase your, your anxiety, that's going to decrease your mood and make you angry, be direct with that person. Be upfront with that person. Change things up a little bit. You know, there's no need to black out on that person. There's no need to wild out on that person because at the end of the day, you're going to be the one who's going to look wrong. You know, because that person's just talking. Even though there may be people around that will agree with you. Don't black out on that person because it's not worth the energy at all. All right. So the question, the one question I have for you all, right? One question I have for you all right now that I want you all to kind of ask yourself when it comes to these individuals that are talking too much. If you're one of those individuals who has to, I guess, deal or figure out how to maneuver around people who talk a lot, right? What are some of the things that you are doing to bring yourself, bring your frustration down? What are some of the things that you are doing to bring your frustration down when you are around a lot of people or when you're around a specific coworker who talks entirely too much and they're blocking you from, you know, doing the things that you could do? Like me, I used to just go outside, read in my car, or I would have headphones in. They wouldn't be on, but I would have headphones in, and that individual who's talking a lot would know to not come talk to me because I would have headphones in because they think I'm not listening to them. When in reality, it's just a way to kind of stop people from coming. 
right? So what are some of the things that you are doing in order to calm yourself down when that frustration or anxiety is increased? Once that person who talks a lot comes over around into your life. <clears throat> all right. So <clears throat> good looking to everyone that's listening and tuning in and all that good stuff. Sunday, the week isn't finna start. Week is about to start for all those individuals who still working. Have a good working week for all those individuals who ain't working at home. I hope you prepare for when this thing uh, end. Like, cause I think I, I did a post on it like a few days ago that when it ends, everybody, <clears throat> because people's lives have changed so drastically, it's not gonna go back to the normal immediately. It's not, you're not gonna wake up and everything is just gonna be back to normal. Like, nah, it's gonna slowly and gradually get back to a place in which you may not be, you know, ready for it, right? You're gonna have to create something new, a new normal, a new routine. A lot of those positive habits, a lot of those positive routines that we had built you know, before all of this went on, a lot of that shit is dead. A lot of us have picked up negative habits along the way. So when this, if, if you're not working right now, and if you're just literally at home not doing anything, start to create something, something small, because I believe it's gonna start coming back up really, really soon. You got certain states who are getting back ready to open their stuff up, and we are too. All right. So as always, as always, as always, good looking, good looking, good looking. Understand though, ain't no wealth without your mental health. So please stay blessed. Take care of yourself. Be great, y'all. Peace.